Hello there, everyone. It's that time of week again, and uh, from Tom's desk. Uh, this week, I want to talk about Isan a bit, because I'm now part of, oh, I forget the name of it. I'll put the link in the post, an Isan group for Westerners. And uh, having lived there for 20 years, I met most of the people I associated with over there were, were Thai people or Isan people. And I spent relatively little time with Westerners. My last, oh, let's say between eight and six years, I averaged about 3,000 kilometers a month on the road, visiting places, some places having to do with uh, Ajahn Mun and Forest Buddhism and his students. Uh, a lot of the time going to, uh, well, I try to at least two times, sometimes three times a year, follow the uh, Mekong River from Lui down to Ubon. Because with the seasons, the Mekong changes quite a bit. But anyhow, uh, the Westerners I met ran the gamut from normal, quiet people enjoying their life in Isan to uh, what I call piss artists, drunkards, and generally, to my mind, a waste of oxygen. All that aside, the majority of people, no matter what, where in those areas they fell, did very little traveling in Isan. And the majority of them also had very little or less Thai. And their wives generally managed their lives for them. A lot of these guys, uh, the only Thai food they ate would generally be cow pot, fried rice, uh, pod Thai, a couple other things. So they had very limited uh, Thai food choices because they didn't really know what's available. Because a lot of, you know, number one, no matter how middle class your wife or companion might be, they were educated in Thailand. And the education system in Thailand, and this isn't my opinion, it's well documented, is useless. It's, it, it's, it's a documented fact that 50%, more than 50% of the people that graduate from university are incompetent in their field of study. So, uh, that's that. Thais don't travel much in general. I mean, here in modern times, they start to travel a little bit more. But I remember I was in Suan Dang Din in Sekonakon. I was at the Nyampa's office and uh, had some questions. And they dug up like four school teachers. And none of them knew where these pottery places were. They weren't familiar. I mean, Seri Thai, which is the Thai freedom fighters, or supposed Thai freedom fighters that uh, were around during the Second World War. Uh, there was an airstrip, a dirt airstrip, in the center of town. And it took me a long time to find somebody who even knew it was there. So, understanding Isan, if you're living someplace. I mean, it's, it, it's a point of choice. If you're perfectly happy, somebody managing your life, somebody looking after everything, somebody sort of deciding the food you're going to eat, where you're going to go and everything else, fine and good. I have, you know, it's, I'm, I'm not here to judge anybody. But if you're interested, you know, in learning what's going on around you, learning that culture that is still there, because so many things are gone now, especially from, you know, 20 some years ago. You have to make the effort to learn some things, how to read a menu so that you can choose your own food. Town names. When I used to be, especially during the floods of 2011, when I was all over, you know, the village people would just love you know, watching me, you know, as I kind of had to go through, you know, I'd look, you know, uh, no one knew and go through and, you know, say, say the letters and then the village name so I could do it. So it, it brings you, I mean, to live someplace where you don't understand what's going on around you is kind of weird. But if you're going to live in Isan or any place in the world 
Learn the culture. I mean, Buddhism in Thailand is generally dead. It's coming out more and more in the papers. But forest Buddhism, places where Buddhism is practiced with moderation and all that, isn't all that crap you see in the village. It's not monks after money and all that kind of stuff. But uh, talking mostly to this group, but anybody that's going to read, you know, this post, you know, learn what's going on around you. You know, learn what it takes. I mean, most people, you know, like to be somewhat respected. You know, but to be respected, you have to conduct yourself in a certain way. And and things like this. So, Isan, Isan is, you know, it's, it's, it's like every place else in the world. But it's what you make of it, what you learn. You know, I can, a very, very dear friend who's since died explained Isan and all of Thailand quite, quite easily when she, she had a small shop and people would come in and treat her like absolute shit, you know, and I'd sit there and I, you know, sometimes people noticed I, you know, long ago when I would still do that, which, you know, they could see I was somewhat irritated and she explained, nobody ever needs to know what's going on in your head. And I love, you know, I, when, I, when I hear people say, it's so wonderful, everybody smiles and everybody's so nice, but you don't know what's going on in their head. And I've so, seen so many people, Westerners I'm talking about now, get hurt over the years because they don't really know what's going on. So you guys, you know, the Westerners in, in, in Thailand or Westerners anywhere that, you know, the, the few hundred that listen to this, learn what's going on around you. And learn, you know, I watch Western, Westerners would get, you know, get angry and get, you know, the minute you get angry, you've lost it in Thailand. Whenever you show any type of emotion, you know, you've kind of lost it. So listen, guys, it's great. It's a wonderful place, but learn something about it and learn to enjoy and travel around Isan. Get out, get off by yourself, get off on your own and learn how to take care of yourself again. Because you don't know, your wife or girlfriend could get hit by your truck tomorrow. And then what are you going to do? I mean, learn, learn how to depend on yourself a certain amount. Learn enough of the language to get from... I mean, the bus system there isn't the greatest in the world. And I mean, excuse me, you're living in a country that has the second highest you know, road death rate in the world. So no matter how you move, unless you want to spend your entire life sitting in your house, that's, that's the way it is. But anyhow, that's just sort of my saying hi, because I guess I'm an administrator in the group and whatever, and just uh, bloviating for this week's From Tom's Desk. Y'all take care and uh, see you next week. Bye.